Hi guys, Virtus Education here with episode 34 of the Unreal Development Kit beginner series. And in this episode, I'm going to be going over uh, animation inside a matinee, more specifically animating objects. So in today's episode, I'm actually going to be going over two kinds of animation. The first kind of animation is going to be using uh, keyframes and so on and so forth. Just a basic sort of animation that you can create inside a UDK. I'm going to quickly run up to this uh, door over here and show you a quick example of some of the stuff you can do uh, with keyframed animation inside a matinee. So if you quickly uh, take a look, as I run up to it, it slightly sli uh, slides up and that's essentially just two keyframes. In addition, I also have this cube here which I've set to rotate and then rotate backwards and that's all of a, um, all part of a lovely matinee sequence which I created. However, I'm also going to be going over skeletal mesh animation inside of uh, Matinee as well, because um, UDK actually allows you to export, um, uh, import animations into UDK from outside of uh, the editor itself. So you can actually create animations and so animations, rigs, and uh, so on and so forth inside of Maya, 3ds Max, and uh, so on. So you can actually see a good example of that with my little. Uh, UT characters here which have set up uh, a matinee sequence to make them do the hula hoop uh, and dance on these crates here. Now obviously these weren't created inside of uh, UDK, these were actually made in Maya by the guy Epic Games or whoever it was that decided to uh, make these. So before I actually get into showing you these, showing you these I'm going to show you uh, the matinee sequences for the two of them so you can actually see the difference between uh, using anim sets and uh, rigs and so on and uh, using just standard keyframe based uh, animation. So we'll start off by opening up um, the door sequence that I have here. This is pretty simple, it's essentially just using a movement track. It has two different uh, keyframes on here, uh, the first one being that it's closed and the second one being that it's open and in the time between the door essentially just moves from point A to point B and uh, yeah, pretty basic really. However, if you take a look at my little uh, UT characters doing the hula hoop, uh, which I open up here, you can actually see that I have uh, a different type of track here. I'm not necessarily just using movement track, I'm also using something called an anim track, which essentially allows us to use uh, pre-made animations inside of matinee. So if I quickly press play, you can see that this is essentially just one big uh, hula hoop animation, which is then uh, looped. So, I will actually be showing you how to uh, use more than one animation to create some kind of sequence. I will try and get the character to uh, run and then jump, and then obviously with that knowledge of doing that stuff, you can then expand on it and do your own uh, sequences and so on and so forth. So, we'll start off by showing you how to make the more basic kind of animation similar to this door. So, obviously, we're going to want something that we can animate. So, for the sake of this, I'm just going to try and animate a door. UDK actually comes with a pretty nice door frame and a door model, so we're actually going to be using this. I've already placed a nice door frame here, so I'm going to be uh, utilizing that. So, I'm just going to quickly put this into place uh, where I want to uh, animate it. Having said that, I advise that you do the same uh, for any mesh that you make. Try and make uh, place it in the start point before you actually open up matinee and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to make some quick adjustments to scale. So there we go. Hopefully that should look about right. Okay, and up a little bit, and there we go. We got it into our door frame, and now it's time to bring it into matinee. However, just a standard static mesh actor like this is not going to work with a movement track. For it to actually work, we need to make a special type of mesh or an actor. We need to make it an interp actor. So whenever you actually bring in a static mesh, uh, from your content browser into your scene, uh, make sure that it's an interp actor. You can do that by selecting it in the content browser, going into your scene, and then to right clicking, uh, and then going to add interp actor and it will show its name. Or alternatively, you can just bring in the static mesh actor, and then just go down to convert, and then convert it to a mover, and you're ready to go and is, um, you know, dynamic friendly. So, Having done that, just go ahead and create a new matinee with it selected. So I'm just going to go down to my sort of door area of my uh, 
kismet stuff and create a new matinee pretty much just like that so now we need to make a group for our movement track just uh, seeing as it's just a basic animation I don't want anything else with it I'm just going to use a standard empty group and then with this I'm just going to go ahead and add a new movement track now f uh, similarly to uh, our previous video where we have different keyframes like this uh, we're going to be doing the same sort of thing with a movement track so the first keyframe is going to be position 1 the next keyframe is going to be position 2 similar to the camera animation we did so the first position is going to be down and then obviously the second position is going to be um, halfway up so to make a new a new keyframe just press enter control and then click and then just drag it along and I want this to take roughly two seconds to open up and uh, with that done make sure that it says adjust key movement and then just go ahead and move your object after you've done that and pretty much it, that's it. Hey presto, you have a basic animation for a door opening. Now obviously you can do more complex stuff than just making a door or something go up and down. You can also do things like um, making uh, pipes go flying off into the air or doors being knocked down and so on and so forth. The only limit is your imagination. Now obviously if I wanted to I can make another keyframe and we could um, make this go up a little bit more and then go off to the side which I'm going to do just to quickly show you that you can uh, do a little more complex stuff so what I'm going to do is move this up make another keyframe here which then moves it to the side and then it's going to come down in the second door frame which is pretty cool and uh, I think this should be about it and then the last keyframe it's just going to be moving it back down to the second position. Now, keep in mind you're not necessarily just uh, restricted to moving things up, down, left and right. You can also rotate things and so on. So just play around with some of this stuff and see what you can get out of it. So with this basic movement system going, uh, going on, I'm going to quickly test this and see what we've got. So the door comes up, slides along and then comes down in the second door frame which is pretty cool. Now, we're also going to be so I apologize for that I had a little interruption but obviously uh, from what we've seen here we can make very basic animations uh, using uh, the transformation tools and just so on and so forth and we can do a whole bunch of stuff with it however we're also going to be touching up on movement tracks and using them in conjunction with the animations so for example when the player walks it will actually walk forwards rather than running on the spot and so on and so forth so let's actually get into this so I'm just gonna go ahead and close this and we're going to find something that we want to animate uh, in terms of a skeletal mesh. The reason for uh, us needing to use the skeletal mesh when we're using animations, uh, proper ones, is uh, UDK needs to know which part of the body to move at certain points and we've got a system called Bones that actually does that. So if I quickly find this skeletal mesh in the content browser you can actually see we've got a rig in this with bones and so on and so forth. These are actually listed over here and you can see them. We've got things like the hands, we've got the legs, uh, and if you keep scrolling down we've got lots and lots of uh, body pieces that we can uh, play around with and then UDK just essentially uh, moves these as the animation tells them to now let's go ahead and get out of this and we're gonna bring a skeletal mesh into the scene so I'm actually gonna quickly show you how you can find a skeletal mesh in your content browser under the favorites bit here just press skeletal meshes and you will find a list of all of your skeletal meshes now the difference between a skeletal mesh and a static mesh is that a skeletal mesh has some bones or some kind of rig uh, tied to it other than that they're very pretty much uh, very uh, similar so now that we found what we want to animate just bring whatever it is into the scene for now I'm going to be using this character here the SK underscore CM uh, iron guard and I'm just going to dump him uh, at, through the door here I'm going to turn him around move him up a bit and uh, we're going to prepare him for his animation so what we're going to be doing is making this guy run jump and uh, move along this little walkway that I have here. So with that done we need to find an animation set. So you can either import your own animation set for this process or obviously you can use some of the preset animations. So for example if I do double click on this one you can have a quick preview of some of the animations in here. 
So the first one being a idle animation. You can actually see the animations from the list here. Uh, this is actually the animation, um, the animation viewer inside of UDK. So you may want to get a little familiar with it. Over here, you have your viewing tools, your properties, uh, your skeleton, uh, skeleton tree, which is like essentially just your uh, rig, your bones, and so on. And then if you've got, then you got your little tabs here, which allow you to go to different sections. Really, you want to go to the animation section here, and then just click on them to go through your animations. I'm not necessarily going to go too deep into this just now, but you can see that you can essentially use this little viewer here to test different animations and preview them before you go ahead and implement them. So, now that we found an animation that will uh an animation that we like, uh you know, for example, we could use a bird, we could use a human you know, it's entirely up to you, but we're going to be using this. So, what we need to do now is with this selected, uh, this little character of ours, we're going to create a new matinee sequence. And just go ahead and uh, do that. And then inside of here, whenever we want to animate a skeletal mesh, we need to create uh, a new skeletal mesh group as opposed to new empty group. And when you create that, you actually get two default tracks. Firstly, you've got the movement track, which works exactly the same as the one we used previously. It's the same track. And then underneath this, we have a different track, which essentially allows us to put different animations, uh, animations in the form of keyframes into it to tell the character what to do, whether that's run, stand there idle, jump, you know, so on and so forth. So, let's start off by actually allowing the sequence to use a specific set of animations. By default, if you just go ahead here and press enter, you can see it says no animation sequence is found. So we actually need to make uh, give it a set that it can use. So to do that, just select the group, and then over here where it says group animation sets, just go ahead and press add new item, as many as you want. You can add more than one animation set, and then just make sure you have the animation set selected in your content browser then over here just press use selected object in content browser and now if we press enter we can actually choose from a whole variety of animations uh, all of those of all of which are actually in that animation set so let's start off by making the player have, uh, be idle so to do that I'm just going to use the cc underscore human male idle and you can actually see we've got this nice lovely keyframe looking thing here which is just the idle animation and uh, yeah so we can move this around in just the same way as we did with the uh, the previous animation and you can also scale this uh, you, by clicking here and then just dragging it along like that and then if you want to move it just press control and click works pretty much just the same way as uh, other stuff you may have to play around with this to get the right um, motion that you want you know just scaling it moving it because sometimes it can be a little hard to pick up from the beginning but as soon as you get it it's pretty easy so with this done we can actually have a look at what we've got using this idle animation now this sequence is actually ready to be sent off or do whatever you want and have the player stand there idle if i press play you can actually see it's got a little bit of motion to it it's moving and it's just standing still so the next part that we're going to do is we're going to add another animation and this animation is going to be the character running. So to add another keyframe or animation just go ahead and press enter and then just choose the next animation that you want to use here. So for now I'm just going to go ahead and look for run forwards and then I'm going to uh, do it with the DPI whatever that is and you can see he's going to start running. However, this is currently running on the spot, and it's currently no good. And having said that, we're actually going to be using this in conjunction with the movement track. So, I'm just going to press enter on the movement track here, make a new keyframe, and then I'm going to make another one. And at the end of the run animation here, we're actually going to move the player forwards a little bit, so it's playing the animation while the character is moving forwards. I'll give you a quick example of that. So let's just press play and it will start running forwards and that's just pretty much some of the stuff you can do. Now remember you can use as many animations you want, you can make the player move any direction uh, or change rotation 
however you like. So let's just go ahead and uh, see if we can add in another animation where the player jumps now. I'm pretty sure they have some jump animations here, but uh, jump up, uh, jump up, and DPI, and let's see how this looks. So the player jumps up, and then we need to add in another animation here, uh, which is the... I think it's another state of the jump animation, so let's see if we can find it. Uh, jump, and then it's down? No, I think it's... Yeah, I think it's uh, up, and then it's down, maybe? It's one of these guys, but uh, let's have a look and see how things go. Nope, I think this is just in the air. But anyway, you can see that we can use numerous animations and we can use stuff in conjunction with this. So I'm going to create another uh, thing here and we're going to make the player move just a little bit while he's in the air here. He's not going to move too far as it's just a jump, but uh, let's have a look and see what we've actually created. So he runs over to it, he jumps, he goes in the air a little bit, he doesn't come down because, you know, gravity doesn't want him to, but uh, you can just see a basic understanding of how animations work inside a matinee. Feel free to make a whole bunch of sequences and so on, uh, whether it's just testing stuff or even cool robots doing the hula hoop on top of crates or whatever. And having said that, this should be everything for this episode. Thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the next video in which I go over the Unreal front end. So I will see you next time. Goodbye.